Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Uh, we are back with Crazy Stock Markets Part 2, um, so the sequel to the video that we did, believe it or not, not even a week ago, uh, and what can investors do. So let's jump into it. So since our last video, uh, and I'll try and link, link the video up on the top right here, uh, which was only four trading days back, uh, March 12th, which is uh, aka a lifetime ago. Uh, the global stock markets have continued to fall deeper into bear territory. The S&P 500 is down 30% in a month. Other markets are worse. Uh, coronavirus cases continue to rise around the globe. Large stimulus and aid packages have been announced by governments uh, around the world. Many cities are on lockdowns, states of emergency have been declared, uh, most kids aren't going to school, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what's the agenda for today? Well, we're going to review the recent market performance. We don't want to, but we will. Uh, we'll also do a quick overview of four stocks uh, from lower to higher risk. I thought it would just be interesting. They'll just be quick one-page profiles, uh, just to have some uh, discussion around those. And then we'll conclude uh, with some concluding thoughts, including uh, what I've been doing. Let's jump into it. So here we go. Uh, the S&P 500 um, over the last year, again, still exhibiting the waterfall pattern that we had identified in our previous video. I'm consolidating our pain here, and we're just reviewing the S&P 500, not the TSX, which is, in fact, unfortunately, a little bit worse. Um, and, you know, we can see here, punch one to the gut was the coronavirus, punch two was the $30 oil, uh, then there's punch three, four, and five. I'm giving Bill, Bill Ackman credit for punch five today uh, coming on CNBC, uh, if you have a chance, take a look at that interview. And of course, you know, this shouldn't be a surprise, TLC warned us to not go chasing waterfalls. And this is a waterfall chart, um, so you know, uh, appreciate their warning, and hopefully you've been following that. All right, so jump into a couple names that I think would be interesting, starting uh, from lower moving out to higher risk. The last two names we talked about would be a little bit higher risk. So Microsoft's probably lower risk play in the current environment. $140 a share, down 25% since recent highs. Uh, price to earnings trailing is about 25 times and it offers a 1.5% dividend yield and it has a net cash of $50 billion. So 25 times earnings after stock market crash like this is not cheap um, valuation wise but the business model definitely sets up really well in the current environment. They've got a strong balance sheet. Uh, if you think about Microsoft's business lines, the cloud, people working from home, Microsoft Office, video gaming, uh, even I'm thinking about, I'm not a video gamer, but I'm thinking about going out and getting a console if, if we're going to be locked in at home here for a while. So the business sets up really well, and the business has had a lot of traction over the last few years, growing up specifically their cloud division um, and their other software has had some nice growth too. So again, not super cheap. But sets up really well in the current environment and could be a low a low risk, lower risk. I'm not calling anything low risk right now. A lower risk way of jumping into a name in the market. And again, if, if Microsoft's a company that you liked up at 170, 180, um, maybe you like it here at 140. McDonald's is the next one we're going to talk about. Uh, so McDonald's currently trading at $137 a share. That's down 37% since the recent highs, so it's been harder hit. Trailing P is about 18 times. I, I just got that off the web. I didn't check it, so uh, just make sure you do your work. Um, three, almost three and a half percent dividend yield, so a little bit juicier dividend. Net debt. So here they don't have net net cash. McDonald's uh, does have net debt of about 50 billion, and that's around four times EBITDA. Again, just I, I took that uh, off of a quick screen, so just make sure you verify. And McDonald's is really trading back at early 2017 levels, uh, and it's a capital light franchise business model, but here we do have a business that has been impacted by, by coronavirus. Uh, 
many of the restaurants are are drive through and delivery only right now. They've they've closed down the seating areas. So what can you expect? Well, you can expect for sure same store sales growth to fall sharply in the short term, and 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 growth will be negative. Uh, you know, far be it for me to predict, but I can almost assure you that same store sales growth will turn negative. And I think the question you want to ask is: there a quick recovery on the other side? So that's McDonald's, uh, and now we'll talk about an interesting one. This is this is uh, one that Bill Ackman talked about a bit on CNBC. So we're getting into the hotel space again, uh, severely impacted uh, by coronavirus. We'll talk about Hilton Hotels, uh, which is the chart here on the left, and then Park uh, Park Hotels, which owns a lot of Hilton. It's a lodging REIT that owns a lot of Hilton properties on the right. Uh, so Hilton at fifty-seven dollars a share, uh, down fifty percent since recent highs, so uh, severely impacted. This is the one that Bill Ackman says he owns a lot of, and uh, I think mentioned that he thought it might be going to zero, uh, but he's still buying it. Park is the one we'll talk about a little bit more here. Again, Park is a lodging REIT, uh, trading at about $5 a share, which is down 80% since recent highs. I mean, that hurts. Uh, market cap of about a billion now so obviously was a much larger market cap before the AFFO was close to three dollars a share in their in just their 2019 results uh, and net debt of about four to five billion and I put that out here they, they uh, made an acquisition last year they've divested some properties so if you if you really wanted to dive into the balance sheet um, park does have significant leverage so you'd want to do your homework on their liquidity um, and you you'd want to look at um, net of the proceeds from any properties that they sold. So you'd have to do some adjustments there. So that's why I put a range around it. Just recently in the last few days, they came out with a press release announcing a dividend cut to zero. Uh, available funds, they didn't announce this, but I'm just saying it. Available funds are going to be negative this year. They've announced cost cutting and they're basically in survival mode. I mean, their, their hotels are going to be closed down for a period of time. Occupancy is going to fall to to pretty pretty much zero <clears throat> and so yeah like I said hotels will be closed this year will be brutal uh, I think you can imagine that they're gonna have to take on more debt just to cover their fixed costs as you know I think revenue is gonna go down pretty close to zero and I think the, the question here is can they stay solvent through to a recovery so again a higher a much higher risk name uh, than a Microsoft and even a McDonald's. And then the last one, we're going to we're gonna do it. We're going to talk about oil. Oh, boy. Um, and in fact, we're going to talk about Imperial Oil and it spared you by picking one of the better ones, believe it or not. Most Canadian energy names are way worse. Uh, Imperial Oil is trading down around $11 a share of Canadian. And that's down 70% since recent highs. Uh, and now sports an 8% dividend yield at these levels. Imperial Oil, and I, I picked one of the stronger balance sheets, larger market cap companies, again, to spare you. Um, historically profitable, free cash flow generative, which is actually rare for oil and gas. If you, if you go through their financial statements quickly, you'll see that it's it, it looks pretty nice on a historical basis. Uh, but um, as we know, uh, it might not be this year, though. Market cap is around nine billion. Debt five and a half billion. Cash one point seven billion. So again, balance sheet in the oil and gas space is pretty strong, um, all things considered. And this, oh man, pains me. I had to go back. Um, it is currently trading at April two thousand levels. Uh, so that's uh, that's a tough twenty years. Oil is at an 18-year low, WTI at 20, or roughly, it's bouncing around. Uh, Canadian Western Select, I read, dropped to around $8 today. So um, they may need to start paying their customers to take oil, uh, in which case they may start asking you, the investors, to start paying them the dividend. Uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm kidding on that. It is just wild and crazy in, in the oil market right now. Um, and this just sort of shows you uh, the times. You can you can find other names that are have been just crushed down 90, 95 plus percent. 
Okay, so conclusion, and I thought we could use uh, a, a picture of a lake here. I believe it's in the Muskoka region, uh, just to calm ourselves down. TLC warned us to stop chasing waterfalls. The rivers and lakes that we're used to would definitely be welcome right now. That water looks pretty calm. From an investing perspective, obviously make sure you have a plan, write it down, don't panic, and, and try not to look at the stock prices too much. If you do have cash to deploy, still set your investment thesis before you buy. Uh, keep your process consistent. And again, this is these are just things that I try and do. Obviously, have your own have your own process. Um, so, what have I done since the last video? Uh, nothing. It's been four trading days. Um, twenty five units after the first punch to the gut. I invested like I, like I said another twenty five units after the second punch to the gut that I, that I invested, and I'm still prepared with another fifty units, but. My thought process around that was only if things get much worse. So, you know, in my mind, the markets would still have to go down a fair bit further. I hope they don't go there, right? I mean, obviously, we're in, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and I hope that uh, we can get this under control. Uh, I'm not sitting here hoping that the markets go down that level, for sure. Um, in fact, just the opposite. Uh, but I am ready um, with with that in reserve if if need be. And again, mostly bought index positions for now, looking at individual names, as you can see. But if I'm going to jump into an individual name, I want to make sure I've done my homework and uh, it's well researched uh, before I do. Let me know what stocks you are researching amid the volatility and uh, markets aside, obviously, stay safe with your families and um, don't know how or when, but we will get through this. So just stay safe in the interim. That's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Put your comments down below with uh, the stocks that you're researching and you think look interesting. Uh, we'll be back soon with more content. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand. <laughs>